Welcome to Let's Do It Christ Way. This program is being brought to you by the Churches of Christ of the Greater Dallas and Fort Worth area. We ask that you find a copy of God's Word. Join us in our study as we strive to do it Christ Way. In humility, we cherish speaking where the Bible speaks and being silent where the Bible is silent. Preaching the good news of salvation to the unredeemed strengthening the saved, encouraging the weary, and lifting up the fallen. Welcome to another edition of Let's Do It Christ's Way. Today we're discussing a very important topic, understanding God's will and man's suffering. But before we do that, we'd like to introduce our guests. And first of all, we have Brother David Starks with us, minister of the Marcellus Avenue Church of Christ. Good to have you with us today. It's good to be here. Thank you. We also mm -hmm. have Brother James Maxwell, mm -hmm. minister of the Southern Hills Church of Christ, also one of the administrators at our school, Southwestern Christian College. Good to have you with us. It's yeah, certainly good to be here. And we also have uh, Brother uh, Alice Sevis Northcutt, uh, mm -hmm. minister of the Cedar Crest Church of Christ. Good to have you with us. Thank you. Good to be here. And I'm your host today, <laughs> Brother Emmanuel White, minister of the Forest Hill Church of Christ. Now, in light of all of the events that have transpired over the last week, we felt it would be appropriate to talk about suffering and understand God's will in man's suffering. Uh, how does God work? Or where is God when things are going on that are bad that we mm -hmm. see happening in the world? And uh, first of all, I'd like Brother Starks, if you would, talk to us about uh, the choice that man has and how man's choice may cause him to suffer. Brother White, I thank you for that question, and I'd like to go back to the uh, book of Genesis, really chapter 3. Uh, it's at the beginning of uh, God creating the heavens and the earth, everything God created. He said at the end of the uh, creation on each day that it was good. Mm -hmm. And he rested on the Sabbath day, not because he was tired, but because he had completed his creative work. God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. And from that he put him into a deep sleep and took from his side a rib which he made the woman for mm -hmm. the woman to be closely connected to him, to be by his side, to be his support and his help mm -hmm. But in the process God gave them uh, a law Hmm. and told them they could eat of every tree of the garden except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The day you eat of that tree, the Bible says you will surely die. Yes, sir. They, had, uh, they were free moral agents and they had the power of choice. Mm -hmm. But the devil, the serpent, uh, the Bible says he was, uh, he was a crafty being. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And he questioned and challenged the woman in that he said, whatever God told you, it's wrong. You shall, God told you to the tree, you will surely die, you shall surely not die. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And through the power of choice, she ate of the tree that God forbid them to eat from. As a result of that, she did not die physically, she died spiritually in that right. she was separated from mm -hmm. God. And then Paul says in the New Testament in 2 Timothy that the woman being deceived was the one who was a victim of uh, transgression and right. mm -hmm. that she fell, but she also influenced her husband mm -hmm. who had the power of choice. Right. And he also violated God's law. And so through the power of choice, what I see happening with them because they disobeyed God, they had to suffer the consequences mm -hmm. of their actions. Okay. And that's pretty much true in, in regards to where we are today because of Adam's sin suffering and death are the consequences mm -hmm. for all of us. Mm -hmm. We look at uh, Romans chapter 5 and verse number 12. Through one man sin entered, entered the world and mm -hmm. death through sin. So death spread to all men because all sin. Right. Paul had already said in the book of Romans chapter 3 that we have all sinned mm -hmm. and come short of the glory of God. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's already informed us that there is none righteous, no, not one. So we have a problem of, uh, in that we have a choice. The choice is between sin and or righteousness. Yes, and when sir. we sin, we're always in violation of God's law. 
While physical suffering remains as a consequence, God provided a second Adam. Hmm. And in the, sec in the first Adam, yeah, all die. Right. Right. But my point is, in the second Adam, <laughs> we're all made alive. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so when you compare the first Adam to the uh, second Adam, the, uh, you recognize that Jesus Christ then becomes superior in every sense of the word. Because through the first Adam, we all die in that we are victims of sin. And so God sent the, uh, the ransom in that he sent his son That's to right. pay the ransom price that we might live. And so it's only through the second Adam, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the second Adam, that we uh, would be made, uh, be made life-giving spirits right. yeah. in that uh, he came to redeem us, to save us. But it couldn't happen in the first Adam because everything in the Old Testament period back there was only what a shadow hmm. of what was to come. Nothing was permanent in the Old Testament period. And so when we look at that Old Testament against the New Testament, a word that I want to coin from the book of Hebrews is, in the King James it says, everything in the book of Hebrews in comparison to the Old Testament is better. Hmm. Better is a word for superior. Mm -hmm. Jesus is superior to Adam, to Moses, to any man who ever lived. When you compare them and look at them, the New Testament is superior to the Old. And so when we look at that, God gives us a choice. The choice is we have to make up our minds whether we're going to do what is right or what is wrong. Now, second point I want to make is as men suffer because of Adam's choice to sin, men also suffer because of sin today. Mm -hmm. So God's permissive will allows men to commit violent, terrorist, inhumane, sinful acts mm -hmm. because right. of man's power of choice. And the things that are happening to us in our world right now, we ask why is all of this happening? we have to understand that all things work within the framework of God's mm -hmm. will. Mm -hmm. We may not always be able to see that all things work together for good, but God sees how things work for our good. He's there beside us at this very moment while we are suffering as a nation. Mm -hmm. And so we have that choice either to remain as we are or to uh, come to him through the power of choice. And the power of choice is always do what God commands us in his word. Yes, sir. And so to take right. man's power of choice away hmm. would simply make him a robot, not to have to accept responsibility for his actions. That's and right. God, God That's never right. gives us that right. That's right. That's he right. is, uh, as he says in, uh, I believe it's in 2 Peter 3, 9, mm -hmm. God is long-suffering yes. toward us, mm -hmm. not wanting any of us to perish, but what? One of all no, of us to come, come to, to repentance. Right. Right. So people rush to judgment and say all the people in the uh, mm -hmm. towers and wherever, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, are now in the hands of God. No man can be in the hand of God unless he is subject to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. right. So we have that power of choice, mm -hmm. and we have to make that decision while we live in this life. And so since God is a God of justice and love and grace and mercy, man must give account of his sins on earth, but especially at the judgment. Mm -hmm. And I wish I had more time to talk mm -hmm. about that because we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Right. Mm -hmm. For what reason? To, to give, give account, account right. of all right. the things we've done in this life, right. whether they be good or bad, whether they be right or wrong, we're going to have to give an account. In fact, the right even goes to the point of saying every idle word that men shall speak we'll have to give an account of when in the day of judgment. Right. But we, we have this to our advantage. The one who judges us will be the righteous judge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Paul's even said that. Right. Mm -hmm. The righteous judge will judge us in that day. And he will, he will make it right if we have lived in accordance to his will. So the power of choice is very, very powerful right now, even in our world. We look at what happened in the towers. We need to look at ourselves individually. Mm. Where am I in the will of God? Mm. Another question I like to pose, which I don't have time to develop in, in, the, in the program, what would Jesus do uh, in light of what is happening in our world right now? We hear the president and all that he's saying, uh, but we look at Jesus in the word of God. He's always striving for peace and harmony in terms of relationships among men. Now that's a mm -hmm. good point. Mm -hmm. Amen. Starks. That's a good point. Amen. And I wish I don't have time to really, know, really deal and, with that. And that's true like. because <laughs> we really got to get to the next point. And okay. I need to give the audience a, a proof mm -hmm. text 
First Peter chapter four, verse fifteen and sixteen mm -hmm. is our proof text. Mm -hmm. Now, Brother Maxwell, I'd like you mm -hmm. to talk to us about mm -hmm. the needlessness, mm -hmm. needlessness to mm -hmm. suffer, and mm -hmm. the need to mm -hmm. suffer. Yes. Would you would you elaborate on that, please? Yeah. It seems rather paradoxical, but true. Uh, there is a needlessness um, in suffering. There are there is some suffering that man endures that really there's no need. Hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. For instance, God, as Brother Starts mentioned, created the world. Thereby, God also created natural laws yes. through which this world be regulated. He created man, and therefore natural laws in which regulates man's physical uh, being. But also he created the spiritual laws through which man's spirituality Amen. would be regulated. And mm -hmm. so um, in this sense, uh, from a natural standpoint, there, there is a lot of suffering that man endures that really shouldn't occur. Right. Uh, number one, God created the law of gravitation. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that means that what goes up must come down. Hmm. So if a man decides that he wants to go on the top of the Empire State Building and, and just jump down, well then God's law of gravitation, even though God do, does not want that man to die in that sense, but he chooses uh, through his power of choice to break that law. Mm -hmm. And therefore he jumps to his death. And so uh, much suffering is caused because man defies the laws of nature. Right. And then God uh, decrees that man must eat. Yes. Now, you must decide when you're going to eat, but at some point you're going to have to eat. All right. And drink. I mean water. <laughs> yeah. and you, you must make that decision yes. at, as to whether you eat or drink. Now, now you don't have to do that. Right. But if you decide not to eat and drink, then you will die because you're defying the laws of nature. Yes. Sir. Mm -hmm. And then the same is true. Uh, many people um, destroy their bodies through uh, substances that were never intended to go into the body. Right. And because of those uh, abusive substances, many times their bodies are destroyed or their lives are shortened, and consequently uh, defying the laws of nature. And then even when it comes to stress and worry, many people worry over things they ought not worry about. Yes. Many people worry about things that, that never have happened or that mm -hmm. never will happen. And consequently, they get all kinds of um, physical maladies uh, and many times suffer as results. Needlessly. Needlessly. Mm -hmm. And that's why we must understand that many people suffer needlessly because they defy God's laws of nature and good health. Now hold that point, Brother mm -hmm. Maxwell. At this time, we're going to have to take a break and acknowledge the congregation that support this broadcast. And while you listen to the musical selection, we encourage you to find one of the churches that's nearest to you. Visit them at your earliest opportunity. You'll always find your honor guest at any and all of the services of the Church of Christ. We'll be back in a moment. Whoa, when we reach that city of the new Jerusalem Oh, we're gonna sing, yeah, we're gonna sing Oh, by and by Oh, how the ransom singers will together lift that hymn When we sing, oh, yeah, oh Redeemer, 
beside the crystal stream up in heaven. I want to see you there. Whoa, bye. Whoa, whoa. Oh, what joy. Oh, what joy. What joy. When we all get a chance to sit down and talk to Jesus and thank him because we made it over. Why can't you see us sitting down in that land? Tell me the saints never have to say goodbye. Up there we're going to sing. Yeah. Welcome back to another edition of Let's Do It Christ's Way. And before the break, we were talking about understanding God's will and suffering. First, we'd like to acknowledge the musical selection was given by Steve Adams, and we appreciate that at this time. Now, Brother Maxwell, you was talking to us about the needlessness mm -hmm. to suffer or how we suffer mm -hmm. for no cause, no reason. Right. Would you continue with that thought, please? Yes. Um, additionally, as I mentioned, God established the natural laws and a man defies or disobeys those natural laws, man may suffer. And within the realm of natural law, God allows for civil law. And uh, he, according to uh, Romans 13, uh, shows that uh, he ordains the civil laws to be for man to obey. Yes. Now, if, if we go out and just run a red light, uh, then we're asking for trouble. Uh, something can happen to us or to someone else. And so many times, Men, men suffer because of, of disobedience to certain laws. Uh, and because of that, then he suffers. Not because God necessarily uh, desires for him to suffer. That's right. But he, God desires for him to obey the civil laws. But when he does not, then he may suffer as a result. And then there is some needful suffering hmm. that must take place before man can be at his best. And uh, that's and that ties in with our with the text of, of the of the show, uh, First Peter four yes. verses fifteen to sixteen, <clears throat> and, and 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 Peter starts out by saying, "Let none of you suffer as a murderer." Right. You see, what you're doing, you you're defying God's law and man's law. Right. Mm -hmm. The spiritual and natural laws. Right. Or as a thief, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Or evil doer. Or, or as an evil doer. That's right. right. See, because you're going to suffer in those ways, yes, sir. as Peter says. But then he says, but yet if any man suffer as a Christian, right. let him not be ashamed, but mm -hmm. let him glorify God on this behalf or in this name. Mm -hmm. And so uh, in one sense, uh, suffering as a Christian is uh, glorifying God. But when you suffer as an evildoer, as a busybody, or right. as a murderer, as a thief, then you're going to suffer uh, too. But that is not without glory. That's right. That's right. And yeah. so... So a person then can suffer without God's glory. He can suffer with God's glory. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a need for suffering, as uh, I mentioned. And suffering uh, is not always a result of breaking spiritual or natural laws. Uh, David taught that afflictions are good. Mm -hmm. um, uh, then in um, Psalm 119, uh, 6 and 7 and 7 and 1, uh, David says, it was good for me that I have been afflicted so that I would not go astray. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So many people uh, 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 cannot be won by goodness. See, God is a good God, but he's also severe. Romans 11, 22. Yes. So consequently, some people are won by discipline. Some people are won by goodness. And so the Bible said the goodness and the severity of God. Hmm. Those are the, are the means through which God works with men. So therefore, that means that uh, David said that it was good for me that I had been afflicted lest I not go astray and that I may keep thy statutes. Yes. Uh, Psalm 119, 67 and 71. And also, um, uh, Joseph suffered, as many of us know. Right. And he's a classic example of those who suffered. I could mention Joe, but he's mentioned so much. <laughs> and uh, you remember his brothers kicked him to the curve mm -hmm. and uh, he was sold into Egypt. Mm -hmm. and remember, from, he went from the pit to the palace. Right. And so they thought that they were really just doing him in, but he, but he went to the palace, and, and as a result, his brothers had to come to Egypt to ask him for uh, sustenance right. because mm -hmm. of, of the drought in the land. And so uh, they didn't even know that Joseph was their brother when they came to him when he was governor of Egypt. Mm -hmm. But then in, in Genesis 50, mm -hmm. and I really love that passage yeah. so much that I want to share it with you mm -hmm. in Genesis That's 50. When uh, Joseph says 
to his brothers. But as for you, mm-hmm. you it. ye thought mm-hmm. evil against me, yes. but God meant it unto well, good yes. right. to bring it to pass as it is this day to yes, save sir. much people alive. So that, that shows that uh, the suffering Joseph endured for God, it was meant for good, mm-hmm. and it brought good many path. many things to pass. Yes. And so, sometimes God's uh, providential purpose cannot be revealed without suffering. Mm-hmm. And then again, I want to share uh, that uh, without pain, many people would not know that they have a problem with diseases. That's true. How many people would know, well, I need to go get this checked out. Man, I'm hurting. Hmm. So pain, in that sense, suffering, God allows that suffering to take place yeah. so that you can go and get better because you got some disease in your body that you need to check out. How many of us would just love to go to the doctor? Mm-hmm. Uh, or just love to go to the dentist? Mm-hmm. Uh, we go because of pain. That's right. And so pain then is good in this sense. It's needful in order to bring out uh, the best in our health. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. And then without pain <clears throat> in discipline, many children will grow up as wild weeds. <laughs> in uh, Hebrews chapter 12, Verses 5 uh, through 11, the Hebrew writer says that God is a God who chastises his children. Yes, sir. Just like a regular parent chastises his children so that they can bring forth fruit, uh, the fruitful works of righteousness. Mm -hmm. And so just think of children that have been undisciplined. Hmm. Uh, Think of the school system. Think of the need for teachers today. Many teachers, many people don't want to teach because of uh, undisciplined kids. That's right. And uh, that's a great problem. You know why? Because those children didn't experience the pain <laughs> of being disciplined. All right. When I say pain, I don't mean just physical pain. <laughs> I mean uh, being grounded, being uh, made accountable right. That's right. for their actions. And then in then Paul, I'll, I'll end with Paul in 2 Corinthians 12. <laughs> seven through nine, you remember when Paul had the thorn in the flesh? Right. And he prayed to God three times, at least three times, right. that God would remove the thorn. But God did not remove the thorn. He allowed that thorn to stick to Paul mm-hmm. so Paul could stick to him mm-hmm. because of the many abu- uh, uh, revelations he had received. Yeah. And he wanted Paul to remain humble and uh, had uh, Paul had even gone to the third heaven, had come back, <laughs> and so he had to be humble. But he said, my grace. But, he, but then God said, my grace is sufficient. It's sufficient for right. you. Yes, sir. And then Paul learned the lesson. He said, uh, through weakness, I am strong. Yes, sir. Therefore, I glorify uh, God <coughs> in my infirmities. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Brother mm-hmm. Maxwell. Now, mm-hmm. as we think about suffering, and you pointed out well that mm-hmm. there are some times we need to suffer. Christ, mm-hmm. Brother Norcott, had to suffer. Mm-hmm. And how did he suffer, Brother Northcutt? How, how did Christ suffer? And what was his suffering like? All right, Christ's suffering was redemptive. Mm-hmm. Uh, he came to suffer in order to redeem us, mm-hmm. to uh, pay a price, to get us back to God, uh, uh, to forgive us of our sins. Yes, sir. Uh, in Hebrews chapter 5, verses 8 and 9, the Bible said, though he was a son, mm-hmm. yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. Mm-hmm. So right. this was God's way to, to save man mm-hmm. from his sin. Jesus had to come and to suffer uh, for our sins. He had come to die for our mm-hmm. sins in order to redeem man or get yes. man back to Christ. And then when we read... Uh, the book of Hebrews, the Hebrew writer tells us that Jesus even came to this earth Hmm. for five primary reasons. He came to suffer, Hmm. he came to die, he came to take the fear out of death, Hmm. he came to comfort us, and he came to destroy the devil. So we're talking about this morning, one of his primary purposes for coming Hmm. was to suffer. So the gospel plan of salvation and the Lord's church was made possible through his suffering. When we read 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and the first four verses, uh, it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, yes, which you have received hmm. where you stand, That's right. mm-hmm. by which also you are saved. If you keep in memory what hmm. I preached unto you, right. how that Christ died for our sins right. according to the scriptures, yes. Yes. and that he was buried and he rose again the third day yes, according sir. to the scriptures. I like that because 
That's preaching in a nutshell. All right. <laughs> right there. That's the gospel. And when, that's the gospel. When you tell a man that Christ, there was a man named Jesus, that he came, he, he died, he, bur he was buried, and he was resurrected, that's good preaching. Yes, it is. Uh, and so I, I, I like that. And then uh, John 19 and 34 says, but one of the soldiers was pierced mm -hmm. his side, and therewith came out blood mm -hmm. and, and water. water. That's right. Blood for uh, cleansing and mm -hmm. water for washing. So suddenly he came to redeem us uh, from our sins. And then when we turn to Acts 20 and 28, mm. uh, Paul getting ready to depart this life, he called the Ephesian elders together, mm. and he said unto them, Take heed unto yourselves and to all the flock which the Holy Spirit hath made you overseers, mm -hmm. to feed the church of God which he had purchased How? with his own blood. Yes, sir. So he died on the cross for the church. He purchased the church with his blood. He called it the church of God, and there's God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mm. So we know that it was the church of Christ because God the Son, Jesus, died mm. yes. on the cross he shed his blood. for the sins yes, of the world. Did. Yes, he did. And uh, so then, Christ set the perfect example of suffering for his disciples to follow. Yes, he did. Uh, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 21 uh, through 24, uh, mm -hmm. Peter says, For even whereunto were ye called, because mm -hmm. Christ also suffered for mm -hmm. us, right. leaving us an example that we should follow his steps, who did no sins, neither were guile found in his mouth, mm -hmm. who when he was revealed, reviled not again, when he was suffered, threatened not, he committed himself to him who judges righteously. Yes, sir. How, how long do you, I have? You, you got about um, 10 seconds. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right. And then that Messianic prophet, I'll close with this. Uh, Isaiah, who was, uh, who was uh, designated by God to reveal the coming of Christ, says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. Yes, he was. He was bruised for mm -hmm. our iniquities. Right. The, the chastisement of Bible peace was upon him, yes, and with his stripes we, we are healed. Are healed. Amen. <laughs> you know, as we wonder about uh, where is God as all things are going mm -hmm. on now, mm -hmm. there's a passage in James chapter 4, verse mm -hmm. number 8, mm -hmm. that says, Draw nigh unto God, and he'll draw nigh unto That's you. Right. Mm -hmm. God never leaves us, and he never forsakes so. us. That's right. We oftentimes leave him. So yeah. where is God when it hurts? Mm -hmm. He's as close to you as you are to him. That's where he is. That's right. mm -hmm. And let's never forget that. Now we have to end the program at this time and we are faced with the storms of life which may pose many questions. While we may not know all of the questions, we do know where and in whom the answers lie. Let's continue to do it Christ's way. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week. You have been watching Let's Do It Christ's Way a weekly question and answer forum brought to you by the Churches of Christ of the Greater Dallas and Fort Worth area. If you have questions or comments regarding this broadcast, you can direct them to Let's Do It Christ Way, care of the Southern Hills Church of Christ at 6969 Seapon Freeway, Dallas, Texas 75217.